Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. I've seen a lot of people posting about these different samplers available in Stable Diffusion. And what I wanted to do was make a reference video to show you what they do and exactly the useful ranges for those. Uh, because there are many to choose from and a lot of people say, hey, just add more steps, it'll be fine. Uh, more steps is always better. Uh, but that's not the case at all. So I went through and I removed all the variables I could. So we're just gonna use one prompt and one seed. We're gonna choose different samplers. And we're gonna start with steps from 10 to 100. Now I didn't go over 100, uh, except for a couple of cases where it actually mattered. Uh, and I did this in 10 step increments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all the samples that are available and how they affected this given prompt. It's very interesting is there's pretty much just three major changes to the image that came about depending on which sample you chose and how many steps you used, which was a big difference. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through each sampler and show you kind of the useful range of that sampler and you can kind of get an idea of where it's coming from. As I said, there's three different images that kind of came out above this or three different looks, we'll call it, and a few other bizarre ones that we're really not gonna count. Uh, but I wanted to show you how each sampler worked and then more or less its effective range. So if you're sitting there throwing 150 at say an Euler sampler, that's really not going to be useful unless it's an Euler adaptive, in which case it is useful or at least more useful. Uh, so let's take a look. So let's start here with Euler. And we started with uh, just 10 steps. I didn't go any lower than this. So I don't think it's kind of a practical limit. But if we start at 10 and we just kind of go upward by 10, you notice that we get a little bit more detail and definition. And some things uh, appear and disappear, for example, around her wrist there, whatever that is, it disappears with another 10 steps. And then we get to about 40. And you see there's not much difference between 30 and 40. And then the rest of the process is uh, pretty useless. So the rest of these go up and you see there is really no appreciable change at all. So when we come back down to it, 30 is pretty much the top end of the useful area in the Euler sampler. Now that does not hold true with the Euler adaptive. And we can see here that as we started to go up, we got some significant shifts pretty early on. And uh, it just continues to change. So all the way upwards to 150, we get slightly different looks after a while, but they're uh, different enough that uh, I might want to count them. For example, the random hand, uh, it comes and goes. It's got a mind of its own, it would appear. And then we even go over a hundred steps here and we keep going up and we still get some uh, some changes. Again, they're not huge, uh, but I don't know that it's worthwhile to go this high to get to this area of image. But I find it interesting is that the Euler Adaptive continues to adapt um, as we go upward. In my opinion, I'd say this is, this is probably a useful sampler anywhere between 10 and 100. Uh, but again, you get some completely different looks depending on where you are in the sampling range. We're gonna go now to a sampler called Hewn. And again, it's a very quick to uh, kind of top out. Uh, so if we get upwards of say 30, and again, we're done. So anywhere between 10 and 30 steps, and you pretty much reach the top end of what this sampler is capable of. Let's go to our old friend LMS. Uh, and you can see here, we've got some good, uh, jumps here at the initial uh, outset, so 10 to 20, and then as we go upward, a little bit more refinement. Uh, but again, right around 50 to 60, we reach the top end of this sampler. So steps over 60 uh, really don't add much. In, step, in fact, steps over 50 don't seem to do either. Uh, so I'd say the effective range of this one is pretty much uh, from 10 to 50. Let's go to one uh, PLMS now, again, starting at 10. Uh, which is a train wreck and has some pretty significant shifts early on, but then it comes into, again, one of our three standards that we keep seeing over and over again, depending on the sampler. Uh, this one gets to about 60 again and then tops out. So uh, again, 60 is the top end range for the PLMS uh, useful range, I would say in steps. Is the DDIM sampler, uh, as you see here, starting out with 10, and then again, it slips right into our old friend here. Uh, so she is going to uh, pretty much evolve around, say, to about 50 steps or so, uh, and maybe 60, but there uh, are some differences between the top end here and the top end at uh, LMS and some of the other samplers. Uh, so they are giving a little bit of their flair. Uh, for example, her shoulder here is not visible uh, where it is in the other samplers. 
Now we come to the DPN family, uh, and you can see here we have a completely different look. Uh, these, uh, interestingly enough, kind of uh, this one evolves instantly. So at 10, it is the exact same as it is at 100. Uh, there is no change at all. DPM Fast starts out a bit of a train wreck <laughs> and continues to evolve. Uh, and we see it uh, taking some pretty significant shifts. He's giving me the finger here, I notice. Although I do like that image, by the way. So I say it's, it's, it's pretty cool uh, because she actually looks like she has real hands. Uh, now there's just a complete fluke, of course, of this specific prompt. So don't say, ooh, DPM Fast is always going to give me five fingers. Uh, that is not the case at all. But we see this evolving, and when we get to about 90 steps, it's starting to take on a little bit more of a form uh, that we're used to seeing in some of the other samplers. But I found that uh, pretty interestingly that from 90 to 100 or 110, right in this range, uh, took a pretty significant shift in the way the image looked. You would imagine that this high up in the step range that it would make minor adjustments. So that was pretty interesting. So three uh, completely different looks, more or less, um, out of just the DPM fast. The DPM-2 sampler, however, produced a completely different looking image uh, than its brethren. And again, uh, often seen in our other samplers, uh, this one stops at about 40 samples in, 30 to 40 samples in, and really doesn't appreciably change anymore um, from that point or above. So very early on, a pretty quick adaption. DPM-2 adaptive uh, starts out with, uh, um, ah, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and quickly evolves into something that we saw uh, very early on with the DPM, but quickly moves past that into what we were noticing above the 100 steps. So now it is really kind of uh, going off the deep end here. One of these, again, that continues to change all the way through 150 steps. Uh, so although finding additional refinement, uh, it's still shifting the image enough that each one is an interesting uh, derivation. Uh, DPM-2 Adaptive Keras, or DPM-2A Keras, uh, also starts out uh, kind of going where uh, where we expect it to. So it heads off into this range of imagery that we have seen. Um, again, another one of these that continues to shift all the way up through 150 samples. Uh, somewhat refining itself, though, uh, later on. But again, that's a big shift right there at 140 to 150. Uh, I would not have expected that. So these are all are pretty interesting in the top end range. And finally, we ended with DPM-2 Keras. This one is just an effective train wreck. Uh, it never really kind of landed anywhere with any of the other imagery uh, and stuck with this, uh, whatever this is, this is the extra from movie, The Thing, I believe, uh, right around 30 to 40 samples and did not move at all. So what does all this mean? It basically means that you're paying for steps probably that you don't need, depending on the sample you're using. So again, we had three to four major images that we got through all the different samplers we use, depending on the number of steps we threw at it. And there's a certain range each one of those samplers is good at. Again, if you're using a local install of Stable Diffusion, you have access to more samplers than are offered currently at Dream Studio AI. But again, that may change over time because it's very simple for them to probably add new samplers or to remove samplers that don't make a lot of sense. Uh, again, the defaults of LMS, um, probably not my favorite sampler of all of them. Uh, again, depending on what you're looking for, you've got three pretty good options. So it's almost like one prompt will yield three distinct images depending on the sampler and the number of steps you throw at it, uh, which is pretty wild. I hadn't really thought that would happen, uh, but that was the case that uh, revealed itself. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you have a favorite or if you found anything that you thought was pretty interesting that somehow I missed here. Uh, so let me know. Take care. Stay safe and I'll catch you all next time.